All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is talking about structures. Now it's time to take variables to the next level. Make them cool, if you will. Okay? So throughout this lesson, what we're going to be doing, we'll talk, of course, about what a structure is. And then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the syntax, how to set one up. Of course, some examples. Examples are great. Examples are cool. Dan's taking the time to come up with some really groovy Dan like Bissell patent tutorials. I like them. The Nestle examples. examples. Joel helped cool a lot, examples. too. Yeah. Yeah. He, he helped by nagging, right? Dan, yeah, are you done did. yet? Dan, are you done yet? Yeah. Dan, are you done yet? I do good at that. Okay, so, of course, uh, we'll take a look at declaration, using structures. We'll talk about dot notation, arrow notation, and even structures with pointer data. So a lot of cool stuff here. Oh, yeah. Joel, take it away. All right, so the first thing is, what is a structure? Dan, what is a structure? A structure is a grouping of variables that form a unified concept. All right. That we can use throughout our code as a variable. Okay, so like what, like a real-world example. Um, real-world. Real-world example. Let's say we have a point out in space. All right. Sounds it, familiar. Is, does it sound familiar? Yeah. Well, in 3D, we have X, Y, and Z. Right. Right. We can make that into a concept in C++ right. by making a structure out of it. So we can define a structure with three variables, float X, float Y, float Z. Right. This is in comparison to, say, in our program that, like we've been doing, we'd have to define float X, float Y, float right. Z. So and it's these, not one unit. Yeah, these three different variables that yep. you're keeping up with. So now we're compacting now it into one But now you can put one this into point. one thing. That's right. Call um, point. Point or... I don't know. Cartesian coordinate. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That was nice and fancy. Lots Ooh. of typing. Those are school words, man. Yeah, I know. School words. LP, and then you I'm can, with you. And then you can make an instance of that. Basically, you're just creating a variable. That's right. And, and it's all contained in that one sentence. That's right. So now you can just refer to it as whatever variable name, dot X, right. dot Y. And but that's Z. dot notation. No, we're yeah, getting we'll get into that. that. So, the, so here I am jumping. The, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Let me, student, student mode. <laughs> Hi, Joel. <laughs> we're talking about structures. Let's go. All right. First thing. Let's go into here and create a structure. So yes. So how do we define a structure? Just start it with struct and followed by the name of your structure. So in this case, let's create a character struct. So that name right there would be equivalent to say int or float. Like or like type in struct int. I mean if if you can't do yeah. that. I know you can't do that. But I mean for the beginner out there. Right. Like sort of kinda yeah. Is this where you're defining the name the of data it. type that you can create variables from. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what does our struct want to have? Well inside of it we want you can put anything. Height, well, weight, yeah. age, gender, name, hey, all stay sorts of away stuff. from the age. Yeah, but that's only for like yeah, you. So don't make a buzz character. <laughs> I'll remember not to do that. Okay, good. It might overload the integer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so dead. <laughs> yeah. All right, so first, int, no, not caps, int, age. And we can define any data types we want. So inside of here, another one, car, char, gender, which just holds M or F. That's right. And finally, well, actually, we'll get to that in a second. Or Z for Zach. Yeah. He's special. He is special. That's right. Yeah. So we have to end this off, the structure, with a semicolon. Now we can use inside of main um, this data type that we've created. So we can define it just like we do like with int. Instead of int, we can say character. And then we give it a name, Zach. which is going to be our variable name. Right. So we can say character Zach. Okay. And inside of Zach, we can say inside of Zach, um, Zach <laughs> dot age <laughs> equals, I don't know how old he is. 22. 22. 45, 45 <laughs> sweet. Let's say 22. And... For gender, we could just say Zach.gender equals oh. Z. Z for Zach, Z because for Zach. he is his own special person. Yes, he is. But Zach it, is unique. Just, just to get back to some special. technical words again, this is called dot notation. Yeah, that's right. And the interesting part, which you can see uh, if Joel decides to top, uh, type dot again, oh, Zach yes. dot. Zach, which is the, data, um, the variable that we've defined. Yep. And if we say dot, which is dot notation, which I almost completely forgot about. This, we get a listing of? Um, of the Variables individual components of this data type. Yeah. Inside right. this data How type. How convenient is yes, that? Yes, very, very convenient. It's very nice. So with that, check this out. At this point, we can come and say C out. Um, um, let's say Zach's age. And we could just say C out Zach dot age. We can do anything we want with it. And end no. Now let's just run this through. Think Zach's age, 22. All right. Very, very cool. So that is kind of cool, but that, you know what? That's really all there is to structures. That's as simple as it is, pretty much. Pretty much until we start talking about maybe some pointer stuff. Yeah, if we stick as a pointer stuff, we might get a little bit scared. So don't die on us, Buzz. 
I'll try not to. Okay. So, let's go up to our character, and let's add another thing. Ca- char name. All right? So, here's the thing. Char name is a pointer with no memory allocated for it. And it has to be a pointer because... Because we don't know how long the name might be. That's right. And that's a bad thing if we start putting in, like, say, 80 or something. We're not really using our memory to its full advantage. That's right. And, and we're advantage. all about efficiency. And we're all about efficiency. Except not for me. <laughs> Joel's very much about efficiency. I take the high-level programmer stance of, let's make it easy. Yeah. High-level stance of, we got a big warehouse with lots of boxes. That's so right. Let us use them. It's, it's not a good way, but that's okay. Yeah, each, each to their own. Each to their own, yeah. So inside of here, we want to say, Zach, well, first thing, Zach dot name equals... And we're going to have to use that operator that we learned back in the that pointer. Super groovy new, new, because we need new memory. Yes, That's we right. do. And instead of like an int, as we did before, it's going to be a char. And in this case, we're going to just directly allocate 80. All right, this is... Not directly the most efficient way in the world. Because we just got done talking exactly. about that. Yes, but... I win, no. <laughs> <laughs> Smack. Uh, anyway, so we just allocated 80 bytes or 80 characters for our name. And now we need to get Zach's name from the user. So, cn, and we can say Zach.name. Just like that. That makes sense, because we're referencing the uh, array string that is inside the structure. Right. And just to make it user-friendly, we can say, enter Zach's new name. <laughs> I was going to say, if you said enter Zach's name, <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, well, you know. Programming humor there, everybody. Yeah. Woo-hoo. <laughs> All right. So let's run this guy. Well, we might want to actually print out Zach's name. Ah, you know what? I like that. So let's do that. You'll notice that we have another thing. Dan, what is our other problem, just while we're here? We allocate memory, and what do we do with it? Well, it's like our warehouse. We're eventually going to run out of boxes, so it's we're going to have to delete it. Uh-oh, it's raining. Boxes are getting soggy. It's a bad thing. So, dink, and we'll just end up. So we just print out the name after we're done with it. Dink, print this out, uh, enter Zach's new name. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, we're going to have soggy boxes, but continue. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. So let's enter Zach's new name, Joel. All right, Zach's name is now Joel. His age is 22. All right, I can drink now. You've achieved your lifelong fantasy. Okay. <laughs> All righty. That's kind of scary. Anyway, uh, let's come into here. And as Dan was nicely nice enough to point out, we are missing a delete statement. So delete Zach dot name. That's right. Isn't that hard? Well, it's it's something that you need to remember. Yes, it and is something that you need to remember. And for the beginner, when you're dealing with pointers again, and you making new memory, you can forget this thing oh, easily. Oh, easily. But we have to remember that we're not responsible for deleting the Zach variable. That's right. We're, we're only responsible for what we made, which was the character pointer. Yep. The array of memory. Exactly. So another thing that we want to point out is we have pointers, like we did in the last lesson. We talked forever about them. Well, here's where we can kind of use them a little bit. Yes. So let's and go we're going to introduce a different form of notation for structures. Exactly. Dealing with pointers and structures. Pointers and structures. Yeah. So inside of character, we're going to create a character pointer. Ooh, fancy. And we'll so call now it... we're pointing to this unique... Structure. ...setup. Yeah, this unique structure. Yep. So we can say player. Now, player is, is not pointing at anything. That's else. right. It's garbly gook It's, right it's garbly gook. Exactly. So how do we create a new one? Um, well, I'm going to look at the example above, which was new character. So player... Which equals player equals new... And we need to say the type, which is going to be character. character. So we say... Player equals new character. Simple as that, right? And we're not going to do an array. We're not going to do an array. We're just going to make one. One. Right. And inside of here, we can say player, but look at that. That doesn't work anymore. Yeah, we don't get our little drop down happening. Hmm. What's going on? Well, the reason is is because player is now just an address, just like it was before. Address, yeah. So the addr- this address is not a structure. Right. So you've got to be sure that you understand that. So if this is a pointer to access the individual data items inside of the structure, you need to use what is called the arrow, which is dink and that. Hey. And look at that. Pretty nice. So now we have access to the individual components. So we can say age equals 19. And we can come in here and maybe say player gender equals M. And everything's cool. Everything's working right. Now... 
we I don't print, want to... Yeah, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I was saying we could print that out now. All we'll right. just be using the arrow notation again. Right, so we can say player, age, and end all on that one. Yep. And, you know, just to add another end line before it, so there's a little bit of separation. And, uh, something. And there's so now 19. Prince 19. So that's right. Yep. But, remember, since we've declared a new character, we need to give it back. That's right. We have to delete that's the right. memory that we made. So, delete... Or that we took, excuse me. Right. That we took. Delete player. Simple as that. And we had to delete that because we were responsible for it. Yeah. It was our responsibility to take it and put it back. But we didn't have to delete the name because we never allocated any memory for it. Right. If we, for instance, allocated some memory like we did up here for player's name, then we would have to delete that as well. That's right. So we'd have to have two deletes. But in this case, we're not allocating a new name, so everything's good. Now, there's one other thing that I think is kind of interesting, kind of important, actually, just so you can understand. Do you remember this operator? What is that? That is the reference operator for pointers. That's right. So if I did player, what would that be giving me? That should give me the structure data. Right. Well, the, the first element, element if you Element of the structure data. Right. So what you can do here is if you put this in parentheses, just to say, do this first, calculate this first. Yep. Now if I say dot, hey, that works. So we're treating this just like we were with the dot notation before. That's right. So if you wanted to do it this way, you can as well. But in the past, you would do it this way. That's right. Now you have the arrow. Don't use this way unless you absolutely have to. I kind of like the the arrow versus the dot just because you know that you're dealing with pointers. That's right. It's very it's very easy to dis differentiate between the two. Yeah, it is. Um, and it and it's a lot easier. You don't have to change this side. Yeah. And the right side. And then worry about the parentheses, make sure they're correct. Exactly, especially when you start getting variables that are really long, start getting variables from functions and all yeah. sorts of weird yeah. stuff. So you want to kind of tone it down. But you know what? I think that's all there is to structures. So, yeah. Again. Yeah. With that, yeah, that, that's good. I mean, I, does the dumb yeah. student understand? Yeah, in this particular case, it's 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 pretty easy to follow. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, yeah. you're just dealing with it's it's like you're defining your own type of your own variable type. And yeah. You turn around and use it. The big the big thing to remember is that a structure is a concept. It's supposed to be one unified idea. Right. With different parts, separate parts that make up that idea. That's it. So with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot, everyone.